Well, uh, another question on much of our time, I, I know it's flying by, but a question I, I make in my business to ask every publishing professional who's ever come on the show um, is, uh, we know that publishing does not have the best track record when it comes to inclusion and a diversity of, of authors' voices and, and, and diversity um, within publishing about who's making the decisions about who's going to be heard. Um, and, and I always like to toss out the caveat, that this is America. Publishing is by no means the only industry that has that that particular issue, but publishing is what we're focused on. So what are you seeing... Uh, publishing do to improve that? And what is the Knight Agency doing to improve diversity and inclusion in publishing? Um, well, I am seeing uh, publishing make a, a concerted effort to hire more diverse staff um, and also to buy more diverse books. I know that that's something that I'm hearing everybody looking for in publishing. Um, I know the Knight Agency has always been about diverse books, always from our inception. And I know that we have a diverse staff as well in terms of um, LGBTQIA representation, um, in terms of uh, other representation. So I know that it's something that we have been um, always had on our minds. And I know if you look at my list, we've got a lot of really wonderful diversity in our list, in my list. So um, I represent uh, N.K. Jemison, um, uh, Vaishnavi Patel, um, some up and coming authors who you will be hearing about, like Damianti Biswas. Um, we handle TJ Klune, we handle um, Nalini Singh. Um, oh my goodness, I'm going to blank on six million names that I should be throwing out. Um, uh, I've worked with Lynn Flewelling for years and years and years. Um, oh my goodness. I, I, yeah, I'm going to be blanking on all of these names I should be throwing out right now, but that's because I don't necessarily think of um, in terms of like which boxes am I checking out, who should I be throwing out when we're talking about diversity. I just think in terms of um, we should always be um, looking at marginalized voices and how we can, um, well, I, you know, I, I just think that we, um, have a lot of Western fantasy out there. And um, I particularly am interested in other stories. Um, again, one of my interests in college was comparative religion. And um, one of the things I've always found fascinating is how there are um, resurrection myths across cultures. There are um, twin myths across cultures. There are these myths, those myths. We have so much more in common than we have apart. And I, I just would love to see so much more of that brought out, so many more stories. Um, Vaishnavi Patel's um, Kaiki, which is coming out, well, by the time this podcast comes out, it will be out, um, is uh, a retelling uh, of the Ramayana and the vilified queen from that story and, um, and just a, a different take. And I just, I wanna see more of those stories and more retellings um, and, and more looks at, um, maybe not this take of history, but that take of history. You know, they always say that the victor tells the tale. Well, I don't want to look at that tale. We've heard that tale. I want to look at this tale, that story, that voice um, that we haven't heard. And, um, and, and that's what I want to see and see more of. But, and I'm hearing that from um, every publishing professional I talk to. Um, and, and yes, yeah, some of it's a response to, um, you know, the political climate, but I think a lot of it is, is authentic too, that we've heard the same thing again and again and again, and we wanna hear different things and we wanna see different things and we wanna be able to distinguish it from what's already out there um, on the shelves and available. Mm 